Hi, this is Chris Peterson, host of the Penny Forward podcast. The Penny Forward podcast is completely produced by blind-owned businesses, including Taylor's Accessibility Services. Find her web hosting services and accessibility consulting services at taylorarnt.com. That's T-A-Y-L-O-R-A-R-N-D-T dot com. Also, we appreciate you listening to the Penny Forward podcast. If you appreciate us, we hope you'll consider providing a small donation to our tip jar to make this podcast possible. It only costs a small amount per episode to produce the Penny Forward podcast, and your assistance will be greatly appreciated. Again, thank you for being a Penny Forward podcast listener. Welcome to the Penny Forward podcast. Penny Forward is a community of people who are blind, their families, and friends who share an interest in financial independence. Visit pennyforward.com to learn more about who we are and what we do. Join us now as we get to know people like us who are working towards their own success. Here's your host, Chris Peterson. My guest today is Eric Yarberry. He's the Director of Education for World Services for the Blind, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about himself. He's blind. And a little bit about World Services for the Blind, for those of us who are unfamiliar with it. And also about some of the training programs that they have available that are related to finance. Eric, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Chris. I really appreciate it. Um, having an opportunity to, to spotlight World Services for the Blind and and share what we do with your followers. A little bit about myself. I grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas, down here in the South. I do have a Southern accent. I'm a big outdoorsman, love to hunt, fish, and I love jujitsu. I've been grappling my entire life, wrestling, and I attended the University of Arkansas at Little Rock and graduated with my bachelor's in English and my master's in professional and technical writing. And then I earned the job as the director of education and training here at World Services for the Blind and just wrapped up my third year. Well, congratulations. That's pretty great. Was that your first job out of college? So my first job out of college was actually at the Lighthouse for the Blind to pay my rent. I needed a little bit of help between my bachelor's degree and my master's degree. And on my breaks, I worked on my application for grad school, walked in in June and told them I was going to be out the door in December. This was just something to pay the rent and, and save for tuition. And then in January, I was at the university as a grad student teaching in a Comp 101 class. Oh, okay. So you had a little bit of work experience before coming to WSB. That's cool. And tell us a little bit about your family life. You're, uh, you're married, right? Do you have any kids or anything? I don't have any kids. I've been married for, it'll be three years in September this year. I've got an awesome leader dog. His name's Hank. Um, and I've had him for just two years now. And he, he'll be four. Uh, he's the baby of the family. Uh, my wife is just fine with him. Is your wife blind also? My wife is not blind. We met at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Um, we've been together six years now. So uh, that's kind of a cool story. We met in a bar. Our first date was in a bar. And so it, it was a true blind date. Uh, I tell people I saw her from across the room. That's funny. I like that. <laughs> Well, tell us, uh, tell us how you came to be then at World Services for the Blind and uh, give us a little overview of what it is that they do. Yeah. So I've been working with World Services for the Blind for over five years now. I started as an instructor for the college prep program in 2015. Actually, it's six years now, actually. Wow. So my first year teaching the college prep program, we had 30 blind and visually impaired students who were getting close to graduating high school or had graduated that summer and who all finished a college course at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Our college prep program's coming up here in July and we're doing that remotely and in person. Um, and we're glad to have the partnership with the University of Arkansas at Little Rock uh, to help get individuals the skills they need to be successful in college. I worked with that program for about three years, um, and then I moved up as the director of education and training, and I still oversee that program, and that program is very near and dear to me. 30 students a year about that program serves? 
prior to COVID, we were serving about 30 students a year. So far this year, I've got 12 on the roster. Uh, that's not bad. And I anticipate that to go up a little bit. Uh, of course, we're coming out of COVID, but that program, I, I anticipate we'll get back up to 30 next year. And uh, do you do you end up following any of those students after they leave the program to find out what becomes of them? Absolutely. One of my favorite, I, I, I love following all of their stories. One of my favorite ones is an individual who took a break after school. He lives up in Illinois and actually went, he works for McGraw Hill and does accessibility work for them now. And it's cool to see where he started and where he wound up. That's cool. I, uh, I love that. We'll continue our interview in a moment, but first. In the age of Zoom meetings and virtual conventions, it can be even harder to really network with people in your industry. Have you ever thought about starting a podcast? It can lead to networking gold. Hosting a podcast is an opportunity to sit in an intimate setting with top movers in your industry and ask them those probing questions. How did you get where you are? Where did you come from? And what was the journey like getting there? If you're interested in starting a podcast, check out superblink.org. Do you have a tip or trick you've discovered that makes managing your finances easier? Tell us about it at 952-856-0313. If you missed that number, you can always find us at pennyforward.com slash podcast. So yeah. tell me about some of the other things that World Services for the Blind does for those of us who, who may not be as familiar as we want to be with the organization. So the World Services for the Blind mission is to provide sustainable independence to individuals in the U.S. and around the world who are blind and visually impaired. Our primary programs are vocational training. We do comprehensive blindness training for individuals who need life skills training. That includes activities of daily living, orientation, mobility, braille, adult education, financial literacy, obviously, because this podcast, I love financial literacy, and then assistive technology and keyboarding. So we cover the basics, but our focus at World Services for the Blind is our career training programs. So our primary focus is our career training programs at World Services for the Blind. We boast an 85% employment rate among successful graduates of our vocational programs. We work very hard to make sure our students are actually going back to work and focused on going back to work. 85%, you said. Yeah. That is amazing. Tell us how you achieve that. The environment that World Services for the Blind has really fosters that focus on that next step, that next chapter. I tell people that in order to, to actually find a job, finding a job is a full-time job. So when students get here, their focus when they hit the door is they know they're going to be leaving World Services for the Blind at some point. If students have come from another training center to here um, who've gotten those soft skills, we're, we're looking at, okay, now you've got your independence. You need to be looking at getting a job. If you aren't interested in getting a job, let's address that. Um, most of the time we're working with vocational rehabilitation counselors. Uh, we're very transparent. Transparency is key. Uh, among me and, and all of our staff, our instructors, our case manager, social worker, uh, where everything that we do here is related back to the vocational rehabilitation counselor. Uh, and the client's very aware of their, their current standing, and so is the counselor. So I say communication is, is key uh, and making sure that students know what the next step is and, and what they need to get there. That's really important. I, I remember coming out of college and and uh, getting the education wasn't so hard, but figuring out how to connect it to a, an actual paying job was very difficult. I don't think I got resume writing and interviewing and things like that exactly, exactly the way that I could have. Is that stuff that you offer in your training programs? Absolutely. Uh, every one of our career training programs, students receive workforce development services. So 
they learn how to write a resume, not just a general resume, but tailor it to every job they apply for. That's, that's the key. And then they also learn interviewing skills. We do mock interviews. Even before they go into a program, we do an interview and then the individual has to do a presentation to a small group of their peers and, and state why they want to go into that career and, and what attracts them to that rather than us just pushing them along. That's, that's not what I'm interested in. Uh, and I know that everyone out there, there is something for everyone and it's just a matter of finding it. And if they're not sure, we'll work with them to, to find a career that they're interested in. Do you have employers that you specifically work with to, to try to match people up with jobs or internships or things like that? So because we serve all 50 states, um, we work really closely with the vocational counselor and we, we make sure that we know what skills an individual has and what skills they need to become employed. If they're getting close to the end of a program, we'll start looking at internships. I think internships are really how you get into a job especially being blind or visually impaired. Unfortunately, we are actually putting out a blog pretty soon about the barriers to employability if you're blind or visually impaired. And some of those things are just education or lack thereof by the employer. And, and really it starts, it starts with you. Who do you know? Who do we know? Um, and we branch out from there. Um, that includes our board. Um, so it's really just a network of people who are willing to take on an intern who is blind or visually impaired. And I say willing because that after the 90 days, they're not going to want to let the, the student go. I mean, at that point, they've trained someone into a job. And that's really what I see most prevalently among our, our graduates is they get into a job through an internship. And then the employer says, hey, I, you're really taking a lot off of our plates and we want to keep you around. That's really great. We'll get back to our interview in just a moment, but first. Do you keep your whole life in your wallet or your purse? That may not be such a good idea. If your wallet got stolen, this has actually happened to me, or your purse, you could be giving away your personally identifiable information, and that could lead to identity theft. Keep in mind that you should never store your passport or your social security card in your wallet. It's also a good idea to only hang on to one or two credit cards that you use frequently. That way, you have fewer cards to close if your wallet is stolen. Also, keep an inventory of what you keep in your wallet so that you know exactly who to call if something happens. Again, this has happened to me, and it can be very disruptive if you don't know what's in your wallet. Do you have a short success story that you would like to share on the air? Leave us a message at 952-856-0313. If you missed that number, you can always find it at pennyforward.com forward slash podcast. I'm, I'm stuck on this 85% because uh, we often hear the the statistic that 70% or 80% of, of blind and visually impaired people are unemployed. So, right. uh, so you're doing something right there and have you figured out what the, what the right is or, or, and, and did it come all at once or did you have to work up to that? No, I, I think we're still trying to figure it out. Every time I look at that 85%, I wonder if it's actually correct. And then I go back to the board, we look at our, our spreadsheet, we look at our numbers and it's, it's 85 above, it's right around there. And that's, that's what we say. And when I first started, I was like, that, that's high, but it wasn't high. And I think the reason it is that is because when students come through our doors, the ones who aren't willing to go to work or if they're not willing to step away from the disability uh, support social security checks. That's, that's what we start talking about. Are they here just for a fun time? If that's the case, we don't, we got to have a conversation about that. We want individuals who are motivated, who are ready to actually get out there and find a job, find employment. Um, because that, that motivation, that attitude is going to impact their peers. Uh, so we, we see students who really aren't motivated and uh, one bad apple spoils the bunch. That's that's really true, especially in an institutional environment. 
Um, we are a residential center and we can house up to 50 at a time. Right now we've got about 25 on campus, but like I said, we've got to make sure that their attitude, they stay positive. And especially for individuals who've just lost their vision, um, navigating that mindset is challenging, is tough. Uh, we provide counseling services here. Uh, so there's, there's always the awareness of mindfulness and making sure that individuals know what they're here for uh, and that negativity doesn't seep into the whole group. At the risk of causing a lot of controversy here, uh, do you know how you uh, compare to other centers of the kind? So World Services for the Blind does offer life skills and, and the comprehensive blindness training. That's not our wheelhouse. We know that a lot of individuals go to other training centers for life skills training, but we're more focused on the vocational side. We do provide those skills if they need the gap areas, and um, we do have those but I, I think that our strength shines out in the crowd for sure, because there is no other agency like us that provides the vocational training or the wide variety of programs that we do. Uh, that's our strong suit. Uh, we are very, we're, we're not competitive with other agencies. We, we communicate very closely with the heads of other agencies to support their graduates who, who are looking to go into vocational training, who have the life skills training. So no controversy for sure. Uh, we just make sure that students who come in here actually want to go to work and want to go back in, into the workforce or go to the workforce for that matter. Well, that's terrific. I, and I, I'm entirely honest when I say that I'm, I'm still stunned by the 85% number. And it's, it's shocking. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, and yet I hope you can improve on it because, yep. uh, every little bit helps. So, uh, Talk more a little bit about the uh, about the specific career training programs that you have that are related to finance, because you have some really interesting things. And finance, I think, is is probably a very accessible career because it's all just numbers, right? Yeah, I'd agree. The nerd in me, I love to look at Excel spreadsheets. A good Excel spreadsheet um, goes a long way. That's that's a lot of fun, and I, I think that's very accessible. I am nearly totally blind myself. I have some light perception. Um, and some shadows and, and kind of things like that. And I use NVDA and JAWS as screen readers. And But as far as our financial courses, so our pre-vocational course is our financial literacy course, not just blind or visually impaired individuals, but, but everybody can benefit from financial literacy. Uh, and I, I think just knowing how to budget, how to manage your household, know what's coming in, what's going out uh, is very crucial to being successful. Because if you've got a job, you're, you're going to be bringing in money uh, and you've got to know how to manage that. If you spend all of your money that you've earned from your job, uh, eventually you'll go in overdraft. Eventually, you know, you're going to wind up spiraling out of control and then we wind up at square one. So it's important that you not only leave World Services for the Blind with an area in career training, but you also leave with financial literacy. So career training programs that we offer that tie to uh, finance is our biggest one is our credit counselor program. Uh, we partner with the National Association of Credit Counselors based out of Florida. And that program is roughly a six to nine month program. It is offered online. A lot of our courses are. That program has multiple certifications. It's got financial health coach, credit counselor, student loans specialist, housing specialist, and debt settlement specialist. So just, just the basic certifications you leave with at least three very specific areas of knowledge. Um, individuals who leave that program, I've seen them go and work for housing and urban development, universities and student loan offices. And I've also had students go work for collection agencies for housing, for like mortgage and, and things like that. And as I said earlier, a, a prime factor of success for our programs is our internships. So here we partner, and even in our clients who are out of state, we partner with agencies in their area to offer internships. So when an individual has finished the five certifications, um, they begin looking for an internship. And even prior to that, that fifth one, we're looking for, for that next step. I don't want there to be a waiting period for, for our graduates. 
so we've had an individual who was up in Illinois and he worked for a college campus doing student support, student loan assistance. Here we have a homeless shelter that we partner with and provide credit counseling and essentially career support. So they teach the homeless how to write resumes and, and do interviewing. So we're passing on what we teach to our students in that course, and then they pass it on. So that's a really cool, really rewarding program. Uh, again, that the program is six to nine months and is offered online and on campus. The other program that we offer that deals with finance in some respect is our medical billing program. That program is one of our newer programs and it really focuses on the reimbursement cycle uh, within the medical field. It is billing. It's not coding. Uh, a lot of students kind of wonder or prospective students wonder is, is that coding? Am I going to have to learn how to code? You will to some extent. Uh, but what that means is you're as a biller, your job is to make sure that the practice gets paid. The patient is current on their bills. And if any money's owed that they get that money back and then that the insurance company pays what they are supposed to pay. So really the, the hub of the wheel, as well as making sure that the codes that come from the coder, uh, once the provider does their, their procedures and, and diagnosis that those codes are correct uh, and gets those on enter. So the, it, that one's a very dynamic program. That program is six months long. Uh, and that one we've partnered with the American Association of Professional Coders. Very reputable organization is the number one organization that provides medical billing education. So we're very proud of that one. That one's new. I've got I believe three graduates within the next month. So we don't have anyone employed in that program yet, but as I said, it's new. So we're, we're not anticipating any issues, but uh, definitely looking forward to their success and, and that program's success. And like credit counseling, we also offer a prerequisite to that and that's medical billing fundamentals. So if individuals come in and they're not familiar with the industry, we teach those fundamentals. Um, so they know different types of insurance, really an introduction to the language of the medical field. When you start a new job, you're, you're wondering what the acronyms are and uh, what everything means. And that, that fundamentals course teaches everything an individual needs to know to get into medical billing, including anatomy and physiology. So I imagine that there's a lot of computer use for, for either of these programs do you work with the kinds of software that people are going to are, are going to use at the bank or at the at the college or at the at the doctor's office to do these things so that they know going out of it that they that the jobs are going to be accessible to them? So because every employer, a lot of employers have a lot of different software they use, um, we don't particularly teach software here. But when they get into the internship, we oversee that that transition, uh, work with the vocational rehabilitation counselors in that transition to make sure that software is accessible. And if there's any accommodations that are needed, we we help vocational rehabilitation um, in making sure the job is accessible. So, yes, essentially. Wow, that's really cool. How many of there are you on staff at World Services? We've got about 45 staff here. Uh, like I said, we are a residential agency, so we do have a housing staff and, and cafeteria staff, three meals a day. Uh, we take up an entire city block and we've, we've got maintenance and, and housekeeping. And I believe we've got about 10 instructors here. We've got a case manager. Um, so we're relatively small, but, but, you know, good things come in small packages. So we work really hard to maintain our, our reputation and to make sure that, that we're doing the right thing by the, the client and the vocational rehabilitation counselor. And then for your career training programs, you're partnering with agencies that offer legit certifications and stuff. So going out of it, people can say, you know, th this person is legit. They, they actually did something. Absolutely. Yeah. My, one of the things I always say is having blind on a resume really can scare off an employer. Um, it's unfortunate that may put a few people off, but we, we want to make sure that individuals go into a career with an industry standard certification. That isn't just some, some certification 
that folks throw together. I, I think, I mean, if you're going to go work for a networking job and you've got certifications through Microsoft, that's reputable. But if you've got certifications from some person you, you don't recognize, that's it's not going to be as reputable and it's going to be harder to get a job. So absolutely. And I spend a lot of time up front before we even bring students in, making sure our courses are accessible. And that, that means sitting down with the organizations we're working with, going through the courses, making changes if necessary, training our instructors. So there's someone on our side who's there to support, who's been certified in that area. And then we also provide the additional assistive technology, braille, adult education, if necessary, along the way. So there is, we make sure there's added value. That's a big deal. And we also make sure that when our students leave, they they look good. We want to make sure they look good and, and they represent us, their vocational rehabilitation counselor and the certifying organization. Uh, they represent them well. Well, that's terrific. We'll continue our interview in a moment. But first... When it comes to money, do you feel a little lost? When you're in an unfamiliar financial environment and need a hand understanding the lay of the land, Penny Forward is here to help. We provide affordable one-on-one -on -one and group financial education programs that give you the confidence to get out there and achieve your goals. Visit pennyforward.com to learn more about who we are and what we do. Do you have a favorite budgeting, banking, or investing app? Tell us about it at 952-856-0313. If you missed that number, you can always find it at pennyforward.com slash podcast. So do people need to work with a rehabilitation counselor to, to get involved in one of these programs? So for vocational training courses, we prefer that individuals work with vocational rehabilitation counselors to cover the cost of tuition, but we do offer a 90 day scholarship for individuals turned down by vocational rehabilitation for life skills training. Really that gives an individual the opportunity to come in, build their skills and really helps us and them determine if they're employable, if there's a path that they're interested in to employment and at World Services, we're we're passionate about making sure that the cost of training isn't an issue. So we're developing that that scholarship continuously and making sure that we can fund as many people who need the the life skills training to really get the skills they need to be successful in a career. That's also terrific. I'm, I'm just so excited about all the things that you're telling me. How can people get a hold of you if they want to? Yeah. So. Folks can follow us on Facebook. It's WSB is our World Services for the Blind. We, we say WSB. And then you can give us a call, 501-664-7100. Anybody can feel free to email me, E. Yarberry, Y-A-R-B-E-R-R-Y, at wsblind.org. Uh, and I'd love to talk to you just, just about anything. Uh, and another thing I want to add as well, is that we do for a students interested in our online training, we do a free assessment that's two weeks um, because everyone's not fit for an online environment. And that helps vocational rehabilitation counselors figure out if online is a good fit for them. We offered that assessment free for a few years now, and, and that's worked out and identifying streaks and weaknesses prior to training. So we can really determine if you're a good fit. If you have any questions about our programs, don't hesitate to reach out. Well, thanks. Uh, is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't think to ask? I don't think so. I, I really appreciate you having me. And one thing we really say around World Services for the Blind is, is honestly, we don't care where you get services. If you need them, just go get them. It's important that you take that first step uh, in the right direction. Sitting at home is is not healthy. And even if you're just getting out and volunteering, it's a step in the right direction. You never know where it's going to take you. Absolutely. Well, Eric, it's been a real pleasure. I hope we can have you on again. And thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Chris. We hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the Penny Forward podcast. Penny Forward is a community of people who are blind, 
their families, and friends who share an interest in financial independence. Visit pennyforward.com to learn more about who we are and what we do. Until next time, from all of us in the Penny Forward community, thanks for listening. 